This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show, recorded December 6, 2011. We're talking KCBS Board of Directors and Mojo Bricks, baby. The Barbecue Central Radio Show is being brought to you by The Barbecue Guru, the original creators of automatic temperature control devices, now offering four different models for you to choose from. Rest easy knowing that The Barbecue Guru is controlling your temperature so you can get on with your life. Visit bbqguru.com or call 800-288-GURU for more information. And by Fred's Music and Tasty Licks BBQ Supply, your online barbecue and grilling superstore. From cookers to grills, wood chips and chunks, and everything in between, also be sure to try the Tasty Licks barbecue brand of rubs and sauces. Check Fred out online at tastylicksbbq.com. And by Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. Located in beautiful Willoughby, Ohio, Stephen DeFranco Jewelers is a family-owned and operated business looking to service the great folks of the barbecue and grilling world. Get free shipping and big discounts by mentioning my name and the term Barbecue Brother. Check out their inventory by visiting stephendefranco.com. And by Butcher Barbecue, with 30 years of experience in retail, wholesale, meat markets, food service, and customer service. Using that experience, everything they do and sell at Butcher's Barbecue comes from real-world knowledge. Check out their award-winning spices, sauces, marinades, and injections by visiting ButcherBBQ.com. Always trust your butcher. And by Draper's Barbecue, a third-generation barbecue company located in western Kentucky between Memphis and Kansas City. Their line of products represents both cities as well as the flavor profiles of Shane's home. Pick up their smoke and sauce and AP rub today by visiting DrapersBBQ.com. Hey, this is Helen Paradise from SoCal, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big-name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting Visiting the website, thebbqcentral.com. Now, let's get in the smoke. Here's your program host, Greg Rempe. Hey, gang, welcome to another edition of the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. Yeah, it's the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. Broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. Rapidly becoming known as the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, by the way, Greg Rempe. And once again, thanks for joining me here on your Tuesday. It's the Outdoor Live Fire Cooking Grilling Show. You can find the show live on a number of media outlets to include the mothership of the show, audio only, thebbqcentralshow.com. You can also find the first hour over at the original home base of the show, latalkradio.com, and we simulcast video and audio on the only television station, internet or otherwise, that is dedicated to outdoor live fire cooking. And that, of course, is where the chat room is as well, outdoorcookingchannel.com. Find one of those three live media outlets. You can get the show in its entirety. In its li- it's, the show is best live. I understand that sometimes people can't see the show, hear the show live because Tuesday at 9 o'clock might not be the most convenient time for everybody to catch the show. I understand that. It is the most fun. You get to interact with a lot of central lights. You get to hear the lowdown as the show is unfolding, screw-ups, mess-ups, great improv, whatever the case may be. It's always great to hear it live, but if you can't do it, if you miss a segment, if you have to step away from the live show at some point, No problem. We got you covered there as well. Full video archives, OutdoorCookingChannel.com. Just go to Video On Demand if you want to see me. If you just want to hear me, subscribe via iTunes, Barbecue Central Radio Show. You can also subscribe via a number of other podcast directories. 
If you don't want to do that, if you just want to use the XML, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to give that to you as well so you can use your own podcast fetching software or whatever it is. So you don't ever have to miss any segment of the show. You can go back and re-listen and re-listen and re-listen to some of the best stuff ever. Whatever you want to do, happy to oblige as far as the show is concerned. Want to jump aboard tonight? More than happy to have you. Lots to get to. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Dot com. That's the email address. And again, that number, 877-448-0433. Big show planned, as I just said. Here's what's happening. Coming up in about 11 minutes from now. Really, we can look at the show in two separate but equally attractive segments. One is we're going to start our interviews in regards to Kansas City Barbecue Society's board of directors, the elections are coming back up. We have people that are looking to add new blood to the current KCBS BOD. I believe there are four spots that are now up for potential election and or replacement. People want new blood in there, or at least that's what we're hearing. And a couple of the guys that I'll be having on tonight would be new blood indeed. Coming up in 11 minutes from now, Steve Farron, I smell smoke, pit master. You would recall, uh, Steve, one of the premier and preeminent barbecuers in the competition scene, also in the restaurant scene up there in the New England area. He is from Massachusetts, uh, Malden, Massachusetts, I believe it is specifically. He's looking to make a run for the board, so we're going to have Steve on and uh, talk some issues with him, see what he plans to bring or what he would hope to plan to bring and uh, get a, a couple of other items from Steve. So look for him 9.35-ish, we're going to be joined by sponsor of the show, Fred Gross from Mojo Bricks. We're going to be talking about the huge sale that he is running, which I believe has tweaked a little bit since we were on the air last week. I think there was like a 50% discount. We'll get the lowdown specifically from Fred himself. I have product to actually kind of hold up and show the people that are on the video side of things. So you can see a bunch of the different products that Fred has. There's this huge thing. It might as well be called a Mojo Stump instead of a Mojo Brick. This thing is so big. Some other things that are a little bit smaller. And then, of course, the traditional Mojo Brick. So a lot of cool products that we can talk about or a lot of cool models of the Mojo Brick product line that we're going to be able to talk to Fred about. That's going to be in about a half an hour from now. Second hour. We're also going to be talking more KCBS in that first interview segment around 1014 with George Mullins. He is another person looking to make KCBS BOD running. Uh, Steve and George are part of a, a ticket. I am calling them, I have nicknamed them the Four Horsemen of Barbecue. They don't have to run with that name, just me. I don't even know what that means, but there's four of them that are on this ticket. You can find out more about them individually, what they're looking to do collectively. Obviously, they're running individually, but they have some like-minded ideas as far as what they might like to see change in the Kansas City Barbecue Society if elected. ChangeKCBS.com. ChangeKCBS.com is that website. You can learn a little bit more about all four of them. Uh, the other two, Jeff Stiff, we will have him on next week. And then we're also looking for Dave Compton potentially at some point as well. That would round out the four horsemen. Also, uh, Steve Greenstead has expressed interest in coming on. So there is going to be a number of interviews as it regards to the KC, as it uh, concerns the KCBS and the potential new board that will be elected in uh, towards the end of the year, uh, first part of next year. And then closing out the show, one of my favorite sweethearts of the barbecue and grilling industry. He holds it down on the West Coast, king of the open air. Uh, farmer's market when it comes to barbecue, TV sensation, and cooking on a pit maker pit, Neil Big Mister. <laughs> Sorry, Big Mister Strader will be joining me, I believe, like from a back part of a van. He's actually going to be working when I call him. He's carving out time for me. And what Neil is going to bring to this show is going to be this. He just got his hands on some new Mojo Hickory flavored bricks. Burned them overnight, I believe. So we'll get a independent review of how this product actually burns. That's the newest flavor, the newest offering for Mojo Bricks. And we'll be able to talk to Neil about some other items as well, especially that whole farmer's market thing that seems to be, if you have good weather, seems to be like a thing that uh, one might want to get into. 
He's had a, a number of great experience, more importantly, successes when it relates to that. So we'll talk to Neil closing out the show. Also, last week, can you believe it? Drum roll, please. Last week of the free Lou Flyder giveaway. If you want to win the Lou Flyder, you're going to have to listen to the show. It could happen in any moment, specifically between the last segment of first hour, last segment of the second hour. I'm going to ask you a trivia question, so you're going to have to be listening to the show. Yes, it has to be live. And you could win a, a free $80, free $80, what would be an $80 retail value prize for free, ships to you for free, and that'll conclude the month-long Luftlighter giveaway. So if you've always wanted to try one, they're electric, they're great. Uh, Chad Ward won one last week, just came in the mail. He was very impressed to see what it was all about. He's going to be pressing that into service this weekend as well. So jam-packed. Your phone calls and emails as it relates to whatever the hell we have going on. Special mention, just because I like pimping the show, because that's what it's all about. If you subscribe to the SmokeSignalsMagazine.com, the Barbecue Central radio show opening page of the new issue of Smoke Signals, you'll see a little, uh, little hit for the show here. So I appreciate Eric Devlin for making that possible. Again, that website, if you want to check it out, SmokeSignalsMagazine.com, SmokeSignalsMagazine.com. So that's what we have on tap tonight, 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Dot com is the email address. I do, because we're going to be having some KCBS stuff going on this evening, I do want to make sure that everybody uh, understands this disclaimer that I'm about to say. The show remains, I remain untied to, unrestricted. I am not a member of any sanctioning body. I am not a member of any barbecue sanctioning organization. People might say, Rempy, that's foolish. Uh, you are a hypocrite. You are promoting, but you are not members of... The bottom line is this. This show needs to remain as impartial as possible. I will root for certain people. I might have friendships outside of the airways as it relates to certain pitmasters and not other ones. That has nothing to do with anything. This show, and when it's live, needs to be a completely unbiased forum for people to come on. There is no hidden agenda with me. I'm going to ask the questions that I think people would want to know or that I want to know. You gather your own information from there, and that's why I continually remain untied, unrelenting to join any barbecue sanctioning body out there. So that is my uh, traditional KCBS or FBA or IBC or whatever you want to call a disclaimer uh, as it relates to the world of barbecue. So we will uh, get into the Steve Farron talk here in just a second. But look, i got to show you here. This uh, is that limited opportunity we're talking about the draper's barbecue christmas gift box can you see this here folks let me pull it up here to make sure that i'm showing you properly there's only look it comes in a handsome black box it had a little yarn on top which i uh, took off just for sake of so here's what it looks like coming in at you you might be asking what it has in it if you're just listening on the audio side let me tell you here is this great stainless steel rub shaker. Now, this is great. Look at that. you got nice big openings. So you can put the rub in there and just kind of shake it on all over the place. I was looking for one of those, actually, so I appreciate that. Here you have a pound. Look at this. A pound of the Draper's Barbecue all-purpose rub. Not six ounces, not seven ounces. A full pound of Draper's AP rub, three generations right here in this bag. Not only is it uh, three generations in a bottle, it's three generations in a bag. AP rub, one pound. Still more coming. How about this? A bottle of Draper's barbecue sauce for you to enjoy. Goes very well with the AP rub. They dovetail together. And then here they are, the four oh, the four hand-picked Draper's barbecue recipes. For instance, the Draper's Barbecue Party Mix right there. Draper's Barbecue Sassy Sausage Balls. Love Sassy Sausage Balls right there. The Draper's Barbecue Savory Ranch Dip, which can be seen uh, right here. Again, always works better if you're on the uh, video site. And the Draper's Barbecue Seasoned Nuts. Who doesn't love seasoned nuts? Love seasoned nuts. That's your gift pack. 75 will be made available. The box, again, includes the large stainless steel rub shaker, 
bottle of smoking sauce, pound of the AP rub, four hand-picked recipes by Shane included in a beautiful gift box. Ready to slap a name tag and slide right underneath the tree. You can check out their website for ordering details. DrapersBarbecue.com. First come, first serve. You can also get their sauce and a rub at DrapersBBQ.com, BBQAddicts.com, and BarbecueProShop.com. All trusted Drapers resources. Drapers Barbecue was always looking for local stores in your area as well to add products. Email Shane at info at DrapersBBQ.com for more info. Your tip could lead you to earning some free swag. And Draper's Barbecue, of course, when they say three generations in a bottle, with pride, baby, they mean it. All right, we're going to come back with Steve Farron right after this. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. The hour. Welcome back to the show. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com if you want to jump aboard. All right, let's go race over to the hotline. We'll talk a little KCBS Board of Directors with the pitmaster of I Smell Smoke, Steve Farron, joining me here on the show. Steve, how are you, buddy? How you doing? Uh, you can call me AKA Horseman Number One. Horseman Number One. I love it. Absolutely love it. You got to be number one because you're first. We're talking about, it, but of course, you're number one in our hearts here, Steve. And of course, you nobody knows that more than you do, uh, Steve. We're obviously not. I mean, we've had you on before. You've talked uh, competition, barbecue, all that fun stuff. We're gonna kind of put it in a uh, organizational sense here for our meeting tonight. Looking to run for the Kansas City Barbecue Society's board of directors. You're a head cook for I Smell Smoke. You're a KCBS certified barbecue judge. You've donated time to cook several CBJ classes in the New England area, co-owner, uh, co-owner of a New England barbecue and catering company. I mean, you have all the credentials behind you as far as barbecue is concerned. Before we get into the issues tonight, though, uh, Steve, what's good with KCBS? What do you like about it? Um, I love the competitions. I mean, I think they have a pretty good backbone going. Um, you know, they're well-run contests. Uh, you know, we have our issues. But overall, uh, it's a great thing, and I'd like to see it expand. Now, I assume it's safe for me to say that, you know, if you were completely disenchanted with KCBS as a whole, you might just stop associating with it in any form or capacity. Sure. All right, so what is the impetus for one like yourself, very successful in the competition scene, very successful in the catering scene, to want to go ahead and make that jump to make a run for the BOD? Um, The biggest impetus is the need for change that I see. I mean, I've been a member for, uh, on and off, I've been a member for 15 years. And, you know, there's been some negative things in the past few years, uh, as well as some positive. I mean, the growth is great, the money is great, but some of the BOD issues uh, are really disconcerting. And, you know, I'm in a position in my life where I can give back a little. Maybe I can help improve things, you know? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of these issues, or at least is how they're explained on that uh, Four Horsemen website, which can be found at changekcbs.com. One of the items that we hear about, it seems year after year by people that are looking to run or are making, uh, it might not be their first time running for board because they haven't been reelected, is the KCBS and the issue of transparency. How do you see it now? What would you like to see it be? Um, I would like to see complete transparency. I mean, I I understand for personnel issues, you might need to have a closed door session uh, and some, you know, contract issues. But other than that, things should be out in the open. Um, When the board is voting on a topic, there should be a written proposal and people ought to be able to look at that proposal and see what exactly our board is voting on. You don't think that's the case or you know that is not the case right now? Uh, I don't believe it's the case. Um, For instance, uh, recently they had a special meeting, 
And I think even some of the board members there didn't know what they were voting on. I mean, like in, in best case scenario, because transparency, you know, what people are assuming uh, and, what, and what we're actually seeing uh, might be two different things. So this is something that you just want to show we're not hiding anything. There's no back door, anything. Every once in a while, we might need to close some doors because it's kind of like uh, locker room stuff. Uh, but everything else needs to be out there for the membership to see and uh, kind of ascertain whatever the case may be, kind of take away whatever they want from what's going on there on the board. Yeah, I mean, that's my belief. I mean, anything from, you know, new proposed contests to, you know, um, I don't know. Th there's a number of issues that like toy, for instance, they've been trying to vote on toy and and I don't believe they have a clear view of what they want to do, what the rules should be. And at the same time, they're trying to have a program written for a new scoring system. And if you don't have the plan in place first, then you can't go and write the software for it. Steve Farron joining us here on the show, I Smell Smoke. Uh, by the way, his uh, website, ismellsmoke.com. Uh, one of the other items, Steve, that uh, we'd like to touch on here during our time is the board leadership as opposed to uh, overmanaging or, or micromanagement. Again, this is a topic that I've heard at least over the last two, possibly three years for people that are running where the board should be focused – more on a, a, a broader scope, moving the movement forward, but there seems to be this perception or there is firsthand knowledge that the board is micromanaging to death, not being able to move the agenda of KCBS forward in a proper way. Right. I mean, we have a, a staff of, I don't know, what is it, five or six people with Carolyn Wells and the people in the office. And, you know, there's issues that they could handle um, that the board doesn't really need to get involved with. I mean, if a rep does something wrong, the office knows what the rules are. The office should be able to dole out any punishment and handle those issues. It shouldn't take a board meeting or a special board meeting to vote on that. Um, and things like this toy, they should have a uh, toy being team of the year. They should have committees to hash out these um, things like this and then bring a clear proposal to the board to vote on. I mean, to sit in a meeting for two hours on one single subject like that is not a good thing. It seems to be something that reoccurs. Every, people talk about uh, trying to change and it doesn't ever change. Why does it seem to be something that continues to happen year after year? Well, I, I think it has changed. I think it has improved. Um, and, you know, the reason it doesn't improve as fast as we'd like to, you know, terms of three years, you know, there are holdovers. And maybe we just need some new voices on the board to move things forward. Is this year different in the fact that more seats are open than there have been in the past? Um, no, I think it's the same every year, but I'm not sure on that. Steve Farron joining us here on the show, looking to make a run for the Kansas City Barbecue Society's board of director. Uh, find out about him personally on the changekcbs.com website if you'd like to. Uh, one of the other items, Steve, is the cook-slash-judge relationships. Yeah, um, that's a big issue for Dave Compton. And, uh, you know, I agree with him on several points. I, I think there's some friction between the two groups that shouldn't exist. And there should be some ways we can get those people together. Uh, my only thing is I don't think it should be done in the competition setting because really you have two different jobs in that setting and maybe it's not the best thing to mix them. But, you know, you can have other events where you invite judges, you invite cooks, and you get them to talk and open up a dialogue. Do you think there is some type of a disconnect between the cooks and the judges right now? Uh, you know, there is some. I mean, there definitely is. You can see it on the forums. If you read any forum, you know, you get people complaining about judges. You have judges complaining about cooks. And I think if we knew where each, each other were coming from, some of that would go away. What about uh, KCBS contest rules? How do you think those are right now, Steve? Um, overall, they're good. I mean, there's some small fixes that need to be made. Um, there's a whole list of judge advisories or rep advisories that some teams aren't even aware of. I think those needs to need to be put into the uh, general set of rules. So, you know, we all know what we're doing out there. Steve Farron joining us here on the show. Uh, Steve, perhaps one of the biggest 
could be a misconception. It could be a truth, even as barbecue as a whole is the fact that, you know, we aren't very technologically advanced. We're not uh, geeks. We might be a little bit behind the curve as far as technology is concerned all the way around. Are there any technological improvements you would like to see the KCBS take on to kind of move them forward? Yeah, I mean, I would like to see the uh, board meetings either put on a uh, audio, live audio stream like your own show or even a video stream so that people can just tune in and see what's going on. You know, you're at the forefront. Do you think that they don't want to do that? There might be some excuses that are out there. We can't do this, or you have to dial in, or five minutes, you need a request. When, obviously, I mean, if I can put out a live audio stream somewhere and people can connect onto it, anybody is, should be able to do that. Do you think that uh, secretly they want to keep everything more closed-doored than open? Um, I think some people do, um, and possibly the majority of the board uh, in the past, maybe even now, want to keep it secret. I don't know. Um but if you get some new members on that that embrace it, we can move forward with it. This question kind of seems to, to fit you perfectly because of where you're located in the country. Obviously, when you say KCBS, you're thinking Kansas City. There's obviously a number of competitions that take place out there in that Mocan area. You're up in New England, so there isn't a huge amount of contests out there. Plus, you're you know part of NEBS or you, or you work with NEBS. What about regional representation on the, the KCBS board? I've heard it talked about a couple of years. doesn't necessarily seem like it started to take effect too much. How do you feel about the way the board is being represented within regions of the country? Um, I think there's ways to do it without, you know, reserving board spots for uh, specific regions. I, I don't know if that's a good way to do it because just putting somebody on the board because they're from New England may not be the best tactic. I think possibly you could have a committee made up of members from all across the country, maybe even members of different organizations like NEBS, like FBA, like uh, you know the Mid-Atlantic Society, and they could bring suggestions to the board through that committee. Steve Farron joining us here on the show, talking about a run for the BOD. This uh, will be for next year, but we're in the middle of a race right now. Uh, Steve, how do you feel about the CBJ and this uh, contest rep education? It seems, you know, we're, we're going over a lot of issues that seem to be recurring year after year after year. Do you think the judges are being educated properly? Is there enough information or retraining or training that is occurring in order to make sure that as a competitor, Steve, you're getting the best shot at the most consistent judging across the board, whether you be in Washington State or whether you be in Florida? I believe if you're a certified anything, you should have some type of continuing education, whether it's a, you know, barbecue judge or some sort of job in your real life. I mean, you should want to be educated and you should want to learn these things. And KCBS should be the one providing that. What do you think the best uh, or most effective way to do that? Because obviously you have some people that are stretch off across the country. Holding a class somewhere might not be the best idea. Do you have an idea of what would be a good ongoing education for those judges? Yeah, I mean, web-based training is the way to go. Like you said, technology is there. Let's use it. All right. What about these uh, KCBS finances? Uh, Is everything being brought out? Does everybody know what's going on as far as membership and where the current foundation is sitting in regards to to money and and how they're allocating it? Um, Well, I know financially KCBS is very healthy. Um, any member can request from the KCBS, KCBS office a copy of the current financials. Um, I have done that. You know, I wanted to know what was going on before I started running for the board. Um, I think maybe those could be posted on the member section of the website. I don't know if there's a problem with that legally, but, you know, they are available. All right. What about... How well do you think the current board is fulfilling the mission statement of KCBS? Uh, Well, that's a good question. I mean, I I see some things (laughs) that I don't think they're fulfilling it very well when you're sending out um, cease and desist orders to, you know, international organizations. Oh, you're jumping ahead of me. You're talking ahead of me. Well, you know, it's part of it, though. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) if you have an international initiative and then you're out – you know, sending out cease and desist letters, is that really part of the mission statement? I don't think so. 
Well, that was going to be, you know, part of my last question here is, uh, or last couple questions. Uh, one of them was, you know, if you were on the board and you're hearing uh, Toby Shea of British Barbecue Society, I don't recall reading anything specifically saying that he was using KCBS's rules specifically, maybe made a reference that he was using the style of rules. And now we're, you know, you've read it just like I've read it. Uh, I don't know if a cease and desist has actually been sent out. Isn't there a possible dialogue that could be opened up where KCBS could use British Barbecue Society or perhaps even make a little bit of money, uh, allowing them to maybe uh, like buy sanction or buy? Uh, I don't even know what the hell the term I'm trying to use, but be able to kind of rent the rules in order to yeah, generate an extra agreement. Yeah, something like exactly, that. exactly. Wouldn't that make more yeah, sense? I de- well, I think it does. I mean, and that's not just on an international level. That, that's, that's also right here in this country. I mean, they've sent those letters to NEBS. They've sent them uh, to uh, contests in New York. I mean, lawyers can tell you what's the best thing to do legally, but it may may not be the best thing to do for your organization. I mean, you should really think about these issues and find a better way to approach it. Do you have a problem at all as a competitor who has to win a certain qualifying competition during the course of year to even potentially qualify to get to go down to the Jack Daniels. Of course, unless you're winning an automatic qualifier, you won seven grand champions within a certain stretch of time. Doesn't it make sense or isn't it fair that the teams coming over from Europe should kind of meet that same criteria in order to be kind of lumped together and cooking together? Uh, I, I believe that should be the case to a certain extent. I mean, to say that right away and enforce that right away might not be the way to go. I mean, you want that national representation, or at least the Jack does, and they know the best way to get it. Um, but if you have an active barbecue community in one of these countries, then yes, absolutely, it should be a qualifying criteria. All right, Steve, let me ask you a question, and this might come off kind of uh, I, I hear it all the time. I've read it a bunch of times, and uh, feel free to, to answer it or, or withhold uh, answering it if you want to. But with all of the growth that KCBS has had, with all the popularity that barbecue has had, whether it be just in the backyard or on the competition circuit, and, I mean, you've seen it grow. You're definitely not uh, averse to seeing what is happening year in and year out. With all of that happening, with KCBS having a board and all this stuff, a lot of people still think that Carolyn Wells is just kind of running things in the back and all of this other stuff that's happening out there is more or less a front and uh, it's, it's kind of like the laundry mat to, to what's actually happening in the back. Do you feel like that? Uh, do you, are you hearing those same things? I mean, I, I hear that. Um, I see the problem is we don't know the truth of the matter and, and that's why we need transparency. We really need to know what is going on, who's running the show, um, what's the force behind these decisions that they've made. And, you know, that's part of our campaign. So what would you like to see change the most? If you if you were voted in, what would be some of the very first things that you would like to start pushing agenda-wise? I would like to see the board meetings opened up and, you know, you don't have to register to be able to listen. I mean, you should have to register to be able to talk. Um, I would like to see the communication between KCBS and its members improve. I mean, they they can send emails out to sell T-shirts, but you don't get much else from KCBS. Those are my two things I would like to see right away, and I think they could easily be solved. With the number of members that KCBS has, what would you feel would be a successful turnout in voting in order to... Let, let me ask you a different question. Do you have any idea what percentage of KCBS members actually compete versus, you know, might go to, to eat at a competition or, or just say that they're a member? I, I don't know those numbers. I mean, I, I, to me, it would seem that the, the, the percentage of competing KCBS members is probably on the smaller percentage side than everybody else. I can't imagine all those people are competing all the time. Uh, do you think if you were voted in, once you got in there, you might... Th- you, you might realize it's even worse than you might even think. Um, <laughs> I, I know I don't know what you mean by worse. I mean it's okay if you have an organization that has a lot of judges. I mean that's that's how we get a lot of our members is through judge classes and stuff. And you know that's not necessarily a bad thing. You need a larger pool of judges than you do cooks anyway. Um, 
But, you know, I don't know if that's a bad thing. I, I uh, didn't ask that question. Right? I meant like just as a whole, once you get in, do you think there's a possibility that once you start interacting with the other board members that you might find out things that are happening that you didn't even really know about? Oh, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. I mean, there's so much we don't know. Is that is, Does that potentially scare you to a certain degree? Make you uneasy? Um, it, was definitely, it was definitely part of the process of, of deciding whether or not I wanted to run. I could say that much. It's something I've discussed with uh, the other guys I'm running with, uh, especially with George Mullins, you know, and we're going in with our eyes wide open and we're willing to do that. Now, uh, go ahead and explain a little bit here before I let you go, Steve, on, you know, what this whole ticket is and the, the change KCBS.com website and why you guys are, I mean, obviously you're running individual, but why you guys are running together uh, kind of starting off. Uh, because we think it's important to get, four new members on the board. Um, and we definitely agree on several issues. Um, we're not going in there as a click to take over the KCBS boards or anybody who thinks that that's not what this is about. It's just about opening people's eyes and letting them know we, we think there should be change. And this is a means to accomplish that. All right. We are talking to Steve Farron. He is the head cook of Ice Mill Smoke. You can find that website, icemillsmoke.com. And if you want to read more about what Steve is looking to do as far as potentially uh, changing the KCBS Board of Directors vision and uh, agenda, you can check that out at changekcbs.com. Steve, always appreciate the conversation and uh, good luck in your run here for the BOD. Uh, thanks. And can I just add one thing? Please. Um, somebody was talking about uh, on your little chat thing here, uh -huh. um, how would we expand KCBS and help it grow? Go ahead. And I think I think expanding the benefits to members would help it grow. I mean, we have 14,000 members. That's a big block of people. We could get cell phone discounts, movie ticket discounts, discounts on barbecue classes. Those are all things KCBS should be doing. All right, Steve. Again, appreciate the time and good luck to you. All right. Thank you. There he is. Steve Farron of I Smell Smoke and changekcbs.com. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll be following him up here in about 45 minutes with George Mullins of the changekcbs.com ticket as well. All right. Thanks to Steve Farron for uh, doing that. A lot of questions to get into that segment. Wanted to touch on as much as I possibly could. Uh, gang, pleased to announce, maybe you didn't know, maybe you've been under a rock. Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue has been working hard to generate quality, fair shipping rates for his customers, and he was able to finally beat down the United States Postal Service. I've always said if anybody can take a federally owned process and company like the U.S. Postal Service and beat them down for better rates, it's Dave Bosca from Butcher Barbecue. Now, all costs will be at a set rate for all orders. $55 or less, your shipping will be $7. All the other orders, $9. It's only, uh, well, it's just another way for you to trust your butcher and why would you want to trust your butcher let me tell you something maybe you are a backyard warrior like myself you're looking to step your barbecue up three or four or ten more notches dave has a plethora of products that are located right on his website at butcherbbq.com to include pork injections of course the world highly acclaimed beef injection he's got rub a number of rubs, by the way, that are very good. He's got that sweet competition barbecue sauce that I was actually doing shots of out of the bottle two weeks ago during the show because it's fantastic. He's got the revolutionary new product called Grill. Now, maybe you don't know what Grill is. Let me give you a little insight here very quickly. This is a product that can be used as an injection. So you're going to mix it up according to the directions. Inject it right into whatever the protein you're going to be using. You can also marinate it. You're going to, you know, put it in a Ziploc bag, let it sit four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, whatever the case may be. Or you can throw caution to the wind and do both. You can marinate it, and then before it hits the grill, you go ahead and inject that bad boy like pork loin or chicken or whatever the case may be. It's like double in flavor fused Jones. It's out of this world. 
and it's called Grill, and you can get yours right now. The more you order, the more you're going to save because of that flat rate shipping. Again, it's uh, $55 or less. Your shipping is 7 bucks for all that you can fit in there. For uh, orders above that, it's $9. So the shipping is fantastic. But more importantly than that, the products are absolutely top-notch. It's Dave Botska from Butcher Barbecue, butcherbbq.com. Visit him now. Definitely hook up with that sauce because I drank it like it's candy. The rubs are outstanding. And, of course, all of those injections and marinades as well. We're going to come back with Fred Gross of Mojo Bricks. More video uh, stuff here in just a second. Stand by. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. Big B, new shot band, suburban voice weapon. Let's go! I'm an outlaw, give me two shots. We don't need a radio, bring a jukebox. For my outlaws, bring me three shots. We can raise hell before the speed stops. I'm a whiskey drinking SOB. If you don't like that, then you won't like me. I'm an outlaw. Oh, yeah, we are all outlaws on this show. Outlaw Steve Farron just joined us talking about his uh, run for the KCBS BOD. You like what Steve had to say? Give him a vote. Why don't you? ChangeKCBS.com, the BOD website. ISmellSmoke.com is his personal website and competition website. All right, let's go ahead and race over to the hotline. And we will bring on the proprietor of Mojo Bricks. It is Fred Gross. Fred, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Uh, certainly my pleasure, Fred. Always appreciate you joining the show. Uh, by the way, mojobricks.com, the website. You can also follow Fred on Twitter. He's an active tweeter. Uh, you can follow him at mojobricks if you're so inclined to do that. All right, so we're, we're kind of breaking up the KCBS BOD talk tonight. You're a current sponsor of the show. you got a very unique product as it relates to the barbecue and grilling world. You're running what is tantamount to a huge promotion, Fred, where you can get a huge amount, a big percentage off of your order right now. Before we get into that, you're the owner. You know what it's all about. Give us a little background uh, about Mojo Bricks and what it's all about, why you love it so much. Well, the brick product is a dense wood brick and it evolved from the home heating marketplace where you can buy these bricks to uh, heat your home and we decided uh, it would be a great product in the barbecue marketplace so we sought sought out single species and we now make them in red oak maple cherry and our newest product is hickory so it's a it's a very consistent heat wise product it's a very consistent um, smoke flavor product uh, it's the same shape every single time. You know, it's it's very consistent and, and predictable uh, when you're using it in a barbecue grill. All right, Fred Gross joining us here on the show. Uh, I'm pulling – I have the box of uh, wood that you sent over here, Fred. And what I'm holding up right now uh, that people can see – I, I've already uh, given it a different product nickname. I hope you don't mind. I've, I'm calling it the Mojo Stump. I mean, this thing is huge. It's, uh, what, maybe two or three times the, the traditional Mojo brick size. Is this something that people are going to be able to get, and who would want to use this? Uh, you know, that's going to go into your stick burners. Um, at, you know, it's going to be pretty versatile. I wouldn't use it in the gas grill, um, but I would use it – um, we're going to try it in the WSM and surround it with charcoal like we have been doing with the smaller bricks and see how it how it cooks that way. Um, but it's definitely in the Jambo and the Langs uh, uh, on the planet. Uh, you know, it's so big. You're right. Uh, it's 11 inches long, 4 inches wide, 5 inches high. They come 3 to a pack, and they're 100% red oak. Now, let me ask you a question here, especially for the stick burners, because I did have one. What about like preheating? When you see stick burners, they always have two, three sticks up on top of the firebox, getting them preheated so they kind of ignite right away when you put them in the firebox. Is there any type of a preheating that needs to take place with the Mojo bricks before you would stick them in a box? Yeah, that that red oak right there, that product, I, I you know, you can pretty much um, you could you could slide that thing right up against hot coals and it's going to ignite on whichever side you you put it up against the hot coals. It, 
the unique, uh, the another unique property with these bricks is that, you know, it's gonna wherever you expose the wood to. If you expose it to flame on one side, that's the side it's gonna burn on. These things burn like a fuse. So this brick, preheating it, yeah, you're definitely want to gonna get it in there a little bit sooner because uh, it is gonna take a little bit more time to get lit. Um, it, it's all about draft with this big brick. So you, you got to get it going and, and then put it in. I, you know, you could cut it up. I mean, you could definitely cut it in half, but you know, we've had feedback on it already. People seem to like it. It works just fine. It's like a big piece of, you know, it's a big piece of wood, except it's very dense. You know, the, the Mojo brick product sinks. It doesn't float in, in water. It will sink. Uh, don't leave it in there too long, though, because it will start to expand. <laughs> Fred Gross joining us here on the show. Shop.mojobricks.com is going to be the place you want to go to actually take advantage of the sale that we have going on. One of the other Mojo Bricks that I have here that I'm holding up right now, Fred, it looks uh, longer, probably as tall as a traditional Mojo Brick, but it's got like some writing that's in it as well, E-C-K or something like that. Is that just like a, a yep, heating that- brick? Yeah, that that is 100% hickory. Oh man, smells fantastic. It, it is. It's a 100% hickory. Uh, we made about a tractor load of those this summer. We're down to about seven pallets remaining, and uh, it's a first come first serve product. It's hickory's one of you know people. We, we got a lot of requests for hickory, so we went about and made some. Um, it, it turns out it's. For us, um, we're re- we're basically recycling wood. So we're taking wood from wood milling plants, guys that are making wood cabinets and wood floors. From Appalachia. And we're taking their salt from the Appalachian region of the United States. That's correct. Right. And we're taking their sawdust and compressing it. So hickory is not something that we can get a, a whole lot of. And because our bricks are, are single species, 100% single species, you know, we're going to try and stick to that formula as long as we possibly can. And, and so the hickory bricks, all the hickory we have is uh, 100% hickory, and they're all in this longer form. Now, we will, uh, once you get to it, the Mojo Brick 6, uh, we're just basically all we're doing is cutting this brick up and turning it into a smaller piece, which, are, which will go into your backwoods um, and go real well with the big green egg, and et cetera. Now, I'm getting a lot of questions here in the chat room about uh, something that I had concerns over as well, especially with the bigger pieces there. For that big brick that we were talking about, the Mojo Stump, if you were to put that at the bottom of a WSM and then you surround it with charcoal, you light it with a minion method, a lot of folks asking if you're going to be running into an issue where uh, smoldering is going to be a problem at all? I, I imagine that will be the case. I mean, it has not been tested yet in the WSM, and I imagine um, you're going to have issues with draft in, in that circumstance, uh, and it might not work. I mean, it, it might just be too big. So you know, it's it's gonna be, we're gonna leave it up to experimentation on that on that big brick. Uh, again, this the big brick might end up only being good for your offset smokers, your you know the people that are burning wood and lots of wood uh, to cook with. So um, again, it's it's really experimental at this stage. Uh, it's so new. It's you know I got you one of the first pieces that I have my hands on. So it will be interesting to see what, you know what can be done with this. Uh, with the stump, as you're calling it. I call it the loaf because it looks like a loaf of bread. Yeah, mojo loaf. I like that one too. Uh, then you have some <laughs> other things that look, I don't know if it was just to fill space of the box or not, but you had some very nice cut, and I'm going to pull some out here. Uh, they look almost like they're in uh, gift bags, is like little cubes. You could probably throw three, four, five of these in a Weber Smoky Mountain. Uh, you know, a little bit, kind of looks like a, a, a lump, or not a lump, but a, a charcoal briquette on steroids. Uh, very nicely shaped, right. all uniform, and you could probably drop a you know small handful of these, and they're going to burn a lot better than your traditional chunks. Yeah, and that's and that's what we're looking for in this product. There's the the small cubes are going to be very versatile. We're going to sell those in a pack of six. If they are in hickory, they'll be a pack of four. Um, but they'll start out in a pack of six. We're also going to put them into 14 pound and 21 pound bags. Uh, the, the idea at, with the little bag is uh, just use it as flavor. You really only need like one or two and like a big green egg when you're, you know, cooking a longer period of time. What, the, the reason we're calling a Mojo, the Mojo Brick 6 is not so much because there's six in the bag, but because one little square 
will smoke for about six hours. It's going to, you know, slow cook and then juice uh, flavor for about six hours uh, when you, you know, put it in a controlled environment. All right. The, uh, uh, go ahead, Fred. The, the, the other thing with the little cube is that you're right. You know, a handful of these in a chimney starter, you, you get it going. They will, when they, as they burn, they, they start to look more and more like lump. They, they basically just, um, uh, what's the word char themselves. Yeah. So you get the, you get the wood flavor the entire time and it just takes forever for them to uh, burn down. So less effort, again, going back to the consistency of the smoke, you got the red Oak smoke. Um, the majority of these are going to be made in red Oak to start out with. Uh, so you'll be seeing them in the, in the 14 and 21 pound bags in red Oak. So that's the flavor you'll see them in. We may, we may make some out of maple, um, uh, but there's just, there's just not enough cherry right now or uh, or hickory to do the bags. But uh, you never know. You might see them in there in Fred, the marketplace. Fred Gross joining us here on the show. Shop.mojobricks.com is the website you're going to go to. I mean, everybody's having a great time visually seeing these while we're talking about them. But look, central lights are inherently cheap, and they want to know what kind of a great deal that they're going to be getting. And I won't let you go without uh, talking about the Mojo Bricks deal that we're going to be running for the next couple of weeks. Well, the coupon code is the same, which I believe was uh, Big Hot Hardwood, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so big, big Hot Hardwood. hardwood. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, uh, anyway, it's uh, <laughs> the Big Hot Hardwood coupon, so put that to good use this week. Um, it's it's 40% this week, and as we get closer to Christmas, that percentage is just going to keep dropping down, so take advantage of it now. Um, and we're also, this week, what we're going to do is give away... Uh, everybody that gets on there and purchases at least ten dollars worth of product, we're going to throw in a a, a, a Mojo Brick six of hickory. Uh, more than likely, if we don't have hickory, we'll send it red oak. Uh, if we don't have red oak, we'll send cherry. But it's not. It's more or less along the lines of what's available when we're shipping it. So it's a. Uh, it's more or less our decision uh, what goes in your box. So, you know, get on there and purchase something. Check out you know, check out some of our products. We. I have to put a shout out right now to um, uh, Mojo Barbecue. Let's see. We are, uh, I was going to say that I'm out of cherry almost, but there is a guy out in Arizona that has some cherry products. So I, I was going to lend a shout out to uh, Steve, to uh, yeah, Steve Knight. Hello, are you still there? I'm here. Okay, good. Mojo Barbecue. <laughs> I am uh, I'm searching for my notes as we speak. I had it written down, and now I can't find it. But uh, uh, we're almost out of cherry here, but uh, he has some cherry out west. And also Barbecue Island in Tempe, Arizona, has some cherry product. But on our website, it's 40% off, and it's uh, and we'll throw in a Mojo Brick 6 of some sort when you order $10 or more worth of product. So that's going to be at shop.mojobricks.com. And... Fred, do they? I mean, do these work better in a, in any particular kind of cooker than others, or they're they're versatile across the board? Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the big green egg. One of the things with the big green egg um, is once you have your your charcoal going and you have your wood chips or wood chunks in there and they burn up, you have to take the grate out. You know, you have to take everything out to get back down to your smoker box. So in a big green egg, these little squares, the motor brick six, are going to work so much better in that circumstance because they'll last so much longer and provide that smoke flavor. You really will only need one or two of these things. Don't go overboard and put a bunch of them in there because you'll just get, you'll get too much smoke flavor. Literally just one or two is going to work on these little chunks. And as far as like a bullet smoke, cause I plan on doing ribs this Saturday is, uh, is one hickory, like, could I put a, a hickory brick down there and I, I won't over smoke the ribs? On the big one? You mean the big, long 10-inch one? Yeah. That big 10-inch hardwood hickory? Correct. The, uh, yeah, I would say um, I would say cut it in half. I mean, I don't know how you're using it. How are you going to use it? Just cooking ribs, just, you know, regular way in the Weber Smoky Mountain. Uh, I would cut it in half. Cut it in half, I mean, right. it's just me. In- cut, cut the... 
Cut it to make it five inches instead of ten. Are are mojo bricks kind of like bigger versions of of pellets? Is this like dust that has been compressed into the bricks versus like the smaller uh, smaller sister of a pellet? It is. Um, pellets are made with about ten to twelve percent moisture, or twelve to thirteen percent moisture, whereas our bricks are. And pellets are extruded through a machine with tons and tons of pressure. Our bricks are made with tons and tons of pressure, except it's more of a um, um, a compression. So they they come out of a mold and it's compressed, and there's pistons involved that you know press the wood together and spit it out. Um, our wood, unlike a pellet, is five to six percent moisture, sometimes as little as four percent moisture, wow. but it's always going to be four four to five percent moisture. So they're extremely dry, but they're a hundred percent single species. In the pellet world, you typically have pellets that are seven percent uh, species of your choice. So when you're buying an apple pellet, it's seven percent of it is apple and the rest of it's some kind of you know filler wood or thirty percent apple and the rest of it's a filler wood. Whereas, you know, we shoot directly for the single species right out of the gate. We're going to try and keep it at that, like I said, as long as we possibly can. Fred Gross is... Just, the... it... Go, Go ahead. ahead. Yeah, it just, it, we just want to be consistent with the product uh, so that you always get the exact same thing every time you cook with it, and you'll get better and better at using them. As you use them more and more, obviously, you get a, a hang of how they work. They are not firewood. They're not wood sticks. They're a completely different product. You know, the motor brick product is, is definitely different than using firewood or, or, or wood sticks or chunks or chips or pellets. So it is a different experience, um, and, and you only, the only way you're going to find out is, is by trying it. All right, and that's why we have the sale going. Again, this is Fred Gross from Mojo Bricks. Uh, shop.mojobricks.com is the place to go for 40% off, and if you order $10 or more, you'll get a, a free Mojo six-pack uh, of uh, Fred's choosing, depending on what's available. Fred, always appreciate the time. Thanks for the sale, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, Greg, thanks for the time. You guys have a great night. All right, take care. There he is. It's Fred, ladies and gentlemen. But he lets Fred talk with passion about uh, what he feels is a superior wood. I don't know if it's like an alternative, but it's a great pro- – I've used it uh, a bunch over the last uh, six months or so. And it certainly is uh, as advertised from what Fred was talking about tonight. So go ahead and take advantage of Extreme Savings, 40% off your order when you use the code Big Hot Hardwood. <laughs> Non-related, that's what my wife likes. All right. Thanks again to Fred Gross from Mojo Bricks. We'll uh, continue to tell you a little bit about that uh, during the rest of the evening. Gang, uh, we talk about Fred's music and barbecue each and every week because, A, he's a sponsor of the show and I have to, but, B... He's a trusted online retailer. Look, everybody that I'm dealing with here partnered with sponsorship-wise is a trusted retailer. I'm not going to sit here and pitch somebody to you that is going to end up screwing you in the behind, especially so close to the holidays. That's not what it's about. That's why Fred wants to take care of you during the holidays, the most succulent time of the year. you got to let Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply simplify your holiday shopping. Gift baskets now available for your favorite barbecue chef or warrior or competitor or whatever the case may be. Each basket includes a different selection of barbecue and cooking rubs, seasonings and sauces, grilling tools. There's many, many different baskets available for you. Perhaps if you don't see one that is available online, Fred will work with you to put one together that is more to your liking. Or this is the best gift ever. I swear I can't believe it. Somebody just thought about it. Get them a gift card in any amount best gift ever does it make you look like a schmuck because you're not able to put forth thought and effort into a loved one's gift yes guess what who cares here's a gift card you get what you want you'll thank me for giving you the k-sheesh you're gonna thank yourself for buying and getting what you want and then using it you don't have to sit there and lie to my face like I know you want to and tell me what a great gift it was. All the while, you know you're going to take the gift receipt, return it for cash, and then go drink it and throw up later. Get a gift card for your friends and family 
your friends that are barbecuers and grillers, your neighbors, whatever the case may be, and you can get them in any amount you want. Gift cards are the way to go, and that's what you want to get at TastyLicksBBQ.com. Now, aside from all of that, two gay, two gay, two day competition barbecue school, March 10th and 11th, presenting Todd Johns from the Pork Pull and Plow Boys. Todd, one of the most successful and winningest team captains on the competition barbecue circuit, one of the most sought-after instructors in the world. In the last few months, teams that took his classes won both the Royal and the Jack Daniels International Invitational Tournament, the two most prestigious contests in the world. If you've always wanted to try a competition school, then this is one you're definitely going to want to take a look at. March 10th and 11th. Go to Tasty Licks BBQ. Dot com and sign up due to economy of scale and demand Todd's classes you're able to have the class fit right in the facility of Shillington Pennsylvania so check it out we'll be back to wrap up the first hour after this big name interviews advice on cooking brisket and ribs and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue it's the barbecue central show All right, we are uh, very behind at the current moment, so uh, let me catch up here. Let me thank Fred Gross. Again, that's a 40% off your purchase, 40% off. And if you get $10 of product, you're going to get a free Mojo Brick six-pack of uh, Fred's choosing, depending on what's available. Uh, might be hickory, might be oak, or possibly oak. But either way, it's free, and uh, really, that's what you want. Shop.mojobricks.com. Fred will uh, continue to hand out when the sales are going to end, but as he said, the longer you wait, uh, the discount will not deepen. The discount will uh, lessen. So take advantage of the 40% off right now. Shop.mojobricks.com. 40% off your order. When you enter in the coupon code, Big Hot Hardwood. Big Hot Hardwood. All right? Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap up the first hour. We look ahead to more KCBS Board of Directors talk here in about 15 minutes from now with George Mullins. We'll close out the show with Neil Strauder. You are listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. This is Scott Greenia from Fairfax, Vermont, also known as Scotty DQ, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people Hold the line. understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> You have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono, it's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate fifty four wieners. So listen, Lavernius, shake face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> You could use it to fight off creeping marauders looking to take your steaks off your grills. I just like being anywhere with Junior, Senior, and Diva. Sounds like a whole other type of movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah, really. <laughs> keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. We have top men working on it right now. Ooh, top men. All right, just like that, we're back in the second hour. Thanks again to uh, Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke. Also, Fred Gross from Mojo Bricks, 40% off sale right now. George Mullins coming up in about 13 minutes from now. Neil Strauder going to be closing out the show 35 past the hour or so. So stay tuned for that, 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. Don't forget, we still have a loop letter to give away at some point. The show as well. Let's go to the hotline. We go to Bob in Warren. Bob, how are you? Good, and you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Bob. What can I do for you tonight, buddy? 
I was calling about the wolf later. Okay, what about it? I was calling hopefully winning. I haven't asked any questions yet, Bob. Uh, Keep listening. It'll be well worth it. Come on. You can't wait for me to prompt you to call. I appreciate your enthusiasm, Bob. Hang out. Enjoy the show a little bit, all right? Oh, my. All right. Reading some communication from top men in the industry about using a five-inch brick in relation to cooking ribs on Saturday. Probably not the best idea from what I'm gathering. All right. I'll lay off. Don't worry. Good Lord. Oh, Mike. 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. All right. Let's see what I got here. All right. Uh, update. Central Lights. Where are you at? As you can see, I am styling and profiling my beard. Look at that. Throwing it in. Yes, I realize I'm a little gray around here. I got about, what is it, been a week? Week or so? Shaved in the thing. Beards for barbecue. Remember, we were going to get healthy. All you fat people were going to be getting on the trim machine. You were going to be counting calories. Did anybody count their calories? Yes or no, and don't lie. Did anybody realize how many calories you're taking in during the course of a week? Anybody? Anybody? Nope. Get that big stuff out of here. Me neither. I got to be honest. Yeah. But I am growing the beard. So let's reaffirm to ourselves, Centralites, that we are going to be better healthy individuals. We're not going to be fat anymore. We're not going to have our 300-pound third graders taken away from us because they're incredibly fat or anything like that. No, we're going to get on the treadmill and we're going to start uh, taking care of our persons individually, ourselves, and we're going to be better for it. Next Tuesday, I will have hit the treadmill at least four or five times and I'm going to feel good about it. But I want to see the beard, so get on the Facebook page, start posting beard pictures, because remember, it's beards for barbecue. This is a a trend that we're starting here. All right. Uh, You, oh, here's uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about. You know, in two weeks' time, is that two weeks, 13th, 20th, will be the last regular show of 2011, if you can believe it or not. So we have a show on the 13th. We're also going to have a show on the 20th. But on the 27th, I made a Facebook post here a couple days ago. I would really like to try out, and I've never done it before, even in the the three-plus years of live show, of doing a 2011 best of. Best moments of this year starting January and then going down all the way towards the end of the year, seeing what we can compress into a two-hour show. So this is what I need from you, whether you're listening as a live audience, whether you're listening in podcast fashion later on here at your convenience. Remember, you're listening to TuneIn Radio Live, Rolling Down the Road, whatever the case may be. If you're a fan of the show, if there is a particular moment during the last 12 months that struck you, maybe you've gone back and listened to something 7, 10, or 15 times or 100 times, if there's a favorite rant that I have done, if there's something that I have covered, a favorite question, a soundbite, anything that has to do with the show that you deem best of 2011, I want you to send me an email or I want you to go on my Facebook page underneath where I said best of 2011. Go ahead and, and uh, give me your thoughts so I can try and start compiling some sound bites or uh, rehashing some takes, whatever the case may be. I would like to see if I could possibly fill the better part of two hours in order to kind of do this best of 2011 style show. So we'll have a regular show next week, regular show the week after that. But the 27th of December, I'm going to be reserving that for a best of show. So if you can help me out on that, send me emails about something you would like to hear again or have me uh, rehash and take form, greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Or you can post it on my Facebook. There's already like 11 suggestions. Uh, One of the ones that was getting a lot of attention was the Hot Grill on Grill Action Jack Daniels song, which was like, you know, word them up, word them up. Jack Daniels, barbecue sauce. 
but it was done in that auto tune. So there you go. Need your help with that? Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com or post on my Facebook underneath where it says uh, 2011 help or whatever I posted about that a couple posts ago. Now, I made a point to ask Steve about this whole British Barbecue Society. For those that are not aware of uh, what is going on, last week I had Toby, was it last week I had Toby Shea on, and we were talking about uh, his idea, what he's doing out there in England, and wanting to get more spaces into the Jack Daniels, and wanting to have the English teams or, or the European teams meet the, a similar criteria in regards to what the American teams have to do in order to get into the Jack Daniels competition, which spawned, you know, the week before that, it was Ray Lampy saying that he wasn't picked to go overseas to, to do a British outreach or a barbecue international glad-handing position or whatever the case. That spawned Toby Shea. All of a sudden... KCBS is now talking about sending a cease and desist letter to Toby Shea of the British Barbecue Society. What? What is going on here? I, as I told Steve, I don't recall, and I could be wrong, I don't recall Toby saying that he is specifically using the KCBS rules word for word. I believe there are specific differences in what the British Barbecue Society is doing in regards to rules that technically wouldn't then uh, have them lifting, you know, like plagiarizing rules. They're not using KCBS logos. They're not using copyrighted material word for word. And I'm no intellectual property guy. I'm not uh, catch people cheating guy. I'm just saying here's a guy that's trying to promote barbecue in, in a sense or in a way from something that he has learned from KCBS, which he thinks is a, a, a good uh, way of doing it and kind of implementing where he's at. Is there no middle ground that can be reached here than sending a cease and desist order to the British Barbecue Society? I think licensing out rules is probably a great way if the board would be so open to another revenue stream. As Steve said, you would have other organizations right here in this country that would pay out to get that licensing to use those rules. You can have licensing opportunities in other areas, not only of the country, but of the world, generating more money for the KCBS. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to grow the sport a little bit more than that? Candy Weaver has promised to come on in two weeks' time to talk about the whole British Barbecue Society fiasco and why they're going to be sending cease and desist, what items were blatantly or potentially crossed where these things had to be sent out. But I can't believe that there would be any reason that KCBS would have such a angst that they, they felt the need that they needed to send a cease and desist. And from what I understand, passed unanimously in a board meeting. They're in England. What Are you going to sue overseas? Are you going to waste that money for what? Open dialogue. From what I understand, Toby wants to open a dialogue. Nobody on KCBS is really wanting to return dialogue. Folks, let's talk. Let's hash it out. It's got to be a win for everybody here. That's what it's all about, a win for everybody. All right, we got George Mullins coming up here in just uh, three minutes. What's about 10 inches long, feels like about three pounds in your hand, and burns hot for you? What? Well, it's Mojo Bricks, of course. That's right. It's the first hickory product by Mojo Bricks for your smoking box. The Mojo Bricks Hickory is not available anywhere else, offered to you exclusively through the Barbecue Central radio show. You can take 40% off your order when you enter the coupon code BIGHOTHARDWOOD on the shop.mojobricks.com website. Again, that's shop.mojobricks.com. This offer will not last long, so go ahead now. Choose the 8-pack of Hickory Hardwood for your shopping cart. That's 8 big 10-inch Mojo Bricks, made, not grown, at a 40% discount on shop.mojobricks.com. The hardwood is unique to the world of wood fuels. It's a dense wood, and it is a green technology that brings it to you. 
It's made in Appalachia. Mojo Bricks Hickory is made from wood shavings and sawdust generated from one source, an Appalachian cabinet and wood floor manufacturer. All the hickory is collected, processed without the use of a binder. There's no chemicals, no glues, no meat glue needed to bring you this fine smoking wood. All wood has its own organic polymer called linen. Linen grows in the cells of the wood, acts as a binder, producing hickory in this form, takes a lot of work, and it will be produced in batches. So it has to be a first come, first served product. Mojo Bricks is the first smoking wood this past spring when it introduced the cherry and the maple and the fred oak. Several of the listeners use Mojo Bricks wood for smoke flavor with great success. And now you can take advantage of this limited time offer when you use the coupon code Big Hot Hard Wood. When you go to shop.mojobricks.com, how can it be used? In a Weber Smoky Mountain or any smoker that relies on charcoal as the fuel, you place one hickory mojo brick in the smoking tray, then surround it with charcoal. In a stumps or other well-insulated smoker, like the Onyx Oven, like the Big Green Egg or a Kamado, you'll need to reduce the size with a camper uh, axe or saw. Remember that the mojo brick product burns like a fuse. And the less wood exposed to fire, the longer the burn times. Typical results vary. Experimentation obviously recommended, but all Mojo Brick products produce steady temperatures, consistent smoke flavor, and make cooking over wood a whole lot easier. You'll enjoy it. Again, 40% off your order, plus $10 or more gets you that free six-pack of Mojo Bricks. Call Fred, 773-398-1992, or info at firewoodbricks. Dot com. That's Fred's contact information. We're going to come back with George Mullins talking about the BOD right after this. Stand by. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs. And the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back 14 past the hour. And we're just waiting for George Mullins to come up here. Thanks to uh, everybody that's joined the show so far. 877-448-0433, Greg, at the BBQCentralShow.com. Let's go ahead and race over to the hotline. We'll talk some more uh, BOD with George Mullen, ladies and gentlemen. George, how are you, buddy? Man, I told you, quit calling for boiled ribs. I don't do that stuff. Oh, have we just uncovered something crazy? Boiled ribs? Yeah. Well, George, I don't you, know. A source tells me you have a, a liking for those. Well, look, uh, I mean, I'm not the one running for BOD, so I could like uh, boiled ribs and then finished in the microwave for glazing for all I care, but that has nothing to do with anything. George Mullins joining us here on the show. Uh, George, you're going to be running for KCBS along with uh, fellow horseman uh, Steve Farron from I Smell Smoke, also Dave Compton, also Jeff Stith, who we'll actually have on next week. We're still chasing Dave. Uh for people that aren't familiar with you, George, a little bit of background about yourself, what you're into as far as barbecue, and why you decided to get in this whole KCBS fracas. Well, oh, wow. That, that's a, a big ball of wax. You know, the short version is, you know, I grew up around barbecue. Uh, my maternal grandmother lived just miles from Lockhart, Texas. I grew up eating at Black's. You know, sh- well, Schmitty's didn't exist. Kreitz Market. In other places like that. I mean, I grew up around barbecue. Then while I was in college, shortly after, I started cooking competition barbecue here in Texas with a good friend of mine. Giant close pit. Things were completely different back then. We shotgun briskets. We cook five, six huge packers at a time, just trying to get one ready to come out and hit our window. You know, things are completely different now. You know, once I got married, started working on a business, my friend had triplets that were unexpected. That discretionary income went away. I took a break from it. And, you know, I, I started cooking competition barbecue again with a, a real good friend of mine, Phil Rosari. Took a trip up to New York, cooked a contest with him, and coincidentally enough, Steve Farron was actually cooking directly behind us. And th- that really got me back into KCBS cooking, and, you know, I've rarely cooked in Texas since. Whenever I can make time to go cook, I'll go out and cook KCBS with friends any opportunity I get. 
you know, and beyond that, I've spent a lot of times moderating another barbecue forum, uh, Barbecue Brethren, if it's okay to mention that. Absolutely. And, you know, as a result of that, you know, when issues would come up dealing with competition barbecue, there were times where I felt obligated to actually go out, find out what the issues were, just to make sure people were playing on the up and up, being straight, and, and knowing what the issues were so I could moderate fairly if I was required to. And as a result, I've gotten to know some folks really learned what the issues are over the last couple of years and friends twisted my arm unfortunately my ego got the better of me at a weak moment and i agreed to do this george mullins joining us here on the show uh, you can find this uh, website i've been talking about it all night uh, changekcbs.com you can find out george actually has his own little uh, bio page on there as well so let's go ahead and touch on some of these issues george uh, first one being the KCBS and its uh, perceived image of non-transparency. How do you see it now? What would you like to see it as a uh, utopian world? Well, you know, in a perfect world, I, I agree with everybody. We need more transparency. You know, I think we need to look at the technology to allow people just to listen in, you know, via the web if possible. Uh, you know, if, if, if the cost is there, you know, we can charge people a nominal fee generating no revenue if necessary. I don't know that that's going to be the case or would be necessary. Uh, you, know, it, you know, right now we have board meetings available, you know, via podcast, but after that month, they go away. There, there is no archive available to members to be able to go back and listen to those. If you want to hold on to them, if you want to be able to go back and listen again, you've got to do your own due diligence and save them yourself. I think we can do better than that. Uh, you know, beyond that, you know, there's too much that goes on in closed session, in my opinion, that doesn't need to be. Personnel matters, pending litigation, contracts, issues like that, I see a just cause for, you know, going into executive session. Uh, you know, beyond that, there's too much that I, I think is discussed back there that doesn't necessarily need to be. Do you have any specific and, examples that you can cite? Uh you know, you're catching me without notes in front of me. I actually do, but I don't have them available. Uh, you know, when we start talking sanctioning, you know, I don't know if that necessar necessarily needs to be discussed in closed session. Uh, you know, that, that's one issue that comes to mind, and there have been cases of that. Right. Uh, you know, beyond that, there, you know, there, there are other issues that are discussed there that have a, a, a reason to be there. But after that has been handled, I think the membership deserves a little bit more explanation than we've gotten in the past. If, uh, if a rep is brought up and some disciplinary action is taken, I think we need to know who the rep was and, and what they did to merit that. You know, and, and that goes for teams as well. And, and that brings up a whole other issue. Basically, there is no due process for a team that's accused of you know, misconduct at a contest. You know, there's uh, it's discussed in closed session, and that team or cook does not have the right to be there to hear the allegations and evidence presented against them that the board is making decision on. You know, th that's no kind of due process in my mind. You know, give the cook the opportunity to listen. If they have a rebuttal to offer, if they have evidence, give them the opportunity to do that. And then if they're found guilty, Come out and tell everybody who the cook was, what it was they did, what the punishment was, so that everybody knows. Do you think that, you know, that the, that's the kind of transparency I'm looking for? I was going to say, do you think that because of all of these closed door sessions that you feel should not be closed, should be wide open, only lend more impetus to the fact that this is a good old boy network? They're keeping things from us, and nobody really knows what's going on in that boardroom because of. Uh, all of the other stuff that is taking place behind closed doors. I think more than anything else, it, it allows people to have that perception. Uh, you know, for an example, the, uh, the international team, you know, the way that whole deal was handled was just wrong. And, and the primary mistake they made was lack of communication, lack of openness. You know, if, if they had had some kind of criteria set and accepted applications, that would have been one step. But there was no explanation of what was going on. It was just a little blurb in the agenda. And then all of a sudden, this is sprung upon people. 
And since then, there's been very little done to go out and publicly explain what was going on. It's a lack of communication more than anything else. I don't know that anything is, is going on that's deceitful, wrong, but you know, there, there's no explanation of what the intent is, what's going on, and why things are being done. And that allows people to form you know, some reasonable questions and start asking them, and when they do, there's still very little response to explain what's really going on to allay those concerns. It, it's just poor management, it's poor communication, and, and it does nobody any good. George Mullins joining us here on the show, talking about his run for KCBS Board of Directors. ChangeKCBS.com, the website. You can find out more about George if you'd like to. Uh, George, I mean, we could hit on you know all these different subcategories of, of things that y- you could comment on, but how about your short-term goal? You know, What must get changed as far as certain items for the board of directors, and what would you like to see, I guess, for, for more of a longer-term goal if you were elected? In? You know, I, I think the two kind of go hand in hand for me. Um, you know, long term, I would like to see more member involvement. And I think part of that is opening up the meetings for everybody to listen. More importantly, I'd like to see members involved in standing committees, have their names be known. And that serves two purposes. One, we have membership involvement and we increase the flow of communication back and forth between the board and the active members. It also serves to free up the board members time to focus on long-term issues in terms of guiding KCBS managing growth rather than month-to-month management and putting band-aids on things. Uh, You know, by, you know, in terms of committees, I'd love to see regional committees focused on sanctioning. Nobody's going to know the team, team density and saturation in an area better than the local teams. Nobody knows issues with existing contests better than local teams. Instead of having two or three board members dealing with sanctioning and looking into all of those issues, why don't we set up regional committees to deal with it? That's going to be a process that will take time to fill, work that process out, but give them, give members the responsibility and the authority to go ahead and do the investigation, submit a report to the board with a, with a recommendation, and then make the board responsible for uh, for taking action. You know, short term, I'd like to see us get more focused on our immediate needs. Uh, I'm, I listened to the uh, the last special meeting, uh-huh. and you know, basically it was a train wreck. A, a, well, a, train, a train wreck and how? Go ahead and explain why it's a train wreck in your eyes. Well, you know, I, I'm a software engineer. I listened to that debate that went on for I don't know how long, and they were discussing issues that the board necessarily shouldn't be discussing. That should have been worked out in committee, and if, if they didn't have somebody to offer them the advice they needed, they should have gone to their software development company, talked about them, talked about those needs, and then they could have discussed it in open session and made a reasonable decision. As it was, the board was arguing about the best way to solve a problem that, you know, based on what I heard, none of them were qualified to offer an opinion on for the most part. I mean, it, it was absolutely nonsensical, and, and basically it was a waste of time. And I, I know I probably just burned a lot of bridges that if elected – you know, with people that I'm going to be serving with. All right, so let's take that for a second, George. Let's say you are elected and you have these certain points, items you would like to see fixed in the short term, items that you would like to see grown over a longer period of time. Is there a potential, and I asked Steve the same question here a little while ago, but is there a, a potential or do you fear that if elected and you get in there and you actually see all of the skeletons that are in the closet because now you're going to be in the inner workings of the board of directors, that you might be introduced and exposed to some things that you didn't even know were going on that might not be all that great? You know what? It, it is a concern because since I've started running, I've, I've had emails from people. And, you know, for the most part, most of them are anonymous. And if I go back to them and ask for, you know, any kind of verification on the issue, I never get a response. So I discount the majority of those. But, yeah, there is concern. You know, there, there is some money sitting in the bank account. The money is coming in to barbecue. It's becoming a much bigger deal. And, you know, it, it is a concern of mine. 
but it's nothing that I'm, I'm terribly worried about, no. How, how do you like to see KCBS fulfilling the, the mission statement of barbecue? Well, it's after looking at the 990, I think we definitely need to be placing a bigger emphasis on education. You know, that's the basis of the tax exempt status we're getting from the IRS. And when I look at what's in the bank account and I look at what's going out and I listen to the board meetings, you know, I think we need to, uh, to start looking at some other programs. We need to uh, place a bigger emphasis on philanthropy and education. Absolutely. That, that's, that's the reason we have our tax exempt status. And I think that needs to be much more important than it has been in the past. Now, kind of keeping within that education, you always have the uh, thing that's perpetually brought up by new members potentially running for BOD is CBJ and contest rep education. What's the the best way in your eyes to keep people that are certified properly educated on an ongoing basis? Well, I, I listened to your interview with Steve, and I agree with him. I think, you know, taking advantage of the technology and the Internet is the most efficient way. We, we've got CBJs and reps, you know, spread all over the country. There's no way we can efficiently hold regional classes and expect people to be able to travel to keep up with, you know, the changing criteria, changing rules, and everything else. Everybody that has access to the computer and the Internet can do it from their homes. How do you like the rules as a competitor for KCBS? Right? Is there anything that you would like to see change or anything that you would have on an agenda to kind of get moved if you were elected in? You know, I, I think there's several things we need to do. Uh, first and foremost, you know, Steve pointed out, you know, there are rep advisories that go out all the time. Well, if you're a cook and you don't listen to the meetings or listen to the podcast, if you rely on finding out that a rep advisory went out in the bullshit, you could cook several contests before you get your issue the bullshit. You know, one, we should allow members to opt in to, uh, to get email blasts. If you're a cook and you want to find out what the, the rep advisories are, you should be able to opt into that system and have it sent directly to you as soon as possible after a board meeting so you know what the changes are. You know, beyond that, we've got a website. There's absolutely no reason for a printed version of the rules and a comprehensive list of all the rep advisories to be available in one package. So you can download it once, have it handy, and look at it anytime you want. You know, know, that's step one. As far as the rules and what needs to be done, I've talked to a lot of people. I've come out with a pretty bold proposal that we need to have a review of the rules every year. I've proposed that we take the top three to five cooks and the team of the year standings in each category, if they're willing to serve, and have them look at the rules for their category and submit proposals to the board. That doesn't necessarily negate the, uh, the input from people that attend the, uh, the annual meeting and the banquet. You know, we could roll all that into one and have all those ideas presented to the board you know, and look at it each and every year, but actually get quality input from the guys that are at the top of each category. George Mullins joining us here on the show talking about his run for the KCBS Board of Directors, changekcbs.com, the website. George, let me change gears just a little bit here. How well do you think that this whole relationship with KCBS and MMA is, is working out? Is it, is it a good benefit, better than you thought, uh, overblown? What do you think? Well, it, it depends on who I'm willing to listen to. You know, I hear from people that do have concerns about the relationship. At the same time, I'm looking at what MMA has brought to KCBS. Sam's Club has been huge in terms of opportunities for cooks as as well as revenue for KCBS. Uh, In general, I think the the relationship has worked out well. You know, I I have some concerns based on last year, the way things went with the way the Sam's Club series was rolled out. It came in late. I think it was rolled out a little sooner than I would have liked. But I think the board did the best they could with the situation they were presented. Uh, and I don't know that that was MMA, MMA's responsibility. But, you know, if, if you're working for me, I, I'm going to ask you to try and get things to me in a little more timely manner possible so that we can do our best to make sure we're presenting a quality product because at the end of the day, KCBS's name 
was on that series, and I don't think it's any secret that there are cooks that had issues with the way things were done. You know, George, you and Dave and Jeff and Steve are really out there campaigning. I don't really hear as as much noise from any of the other hopeful candidates that are out there, although we're going to be having at least one or two on here before election time comes on. Do you anticipate a bigger turnout to vote to help you guys get in this year? Do you expecting about the same, less, more? What are you hoping? Well, you know, I haven't campaigned nearly as hard as I would have liked to. This is the busiest time of year for me, as well as the fact that I'm getting ready to take my wife on vacation for a week next year that is long overdue. But, you know, in terms of turnout, you know, 18% last year was disappointing to me. Do I expect more this year? I don't know. I, I would hope so. Um, you know, I think if there was a bigger turnout, you know, I don't know if that would help or hurt me. But I'd feel much more comfortable about, you know, whoever is elected. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're elected, you're elected to represent the membership. And the more members that vote, the the more comfortable I feel knowing that, you know, the majority of members are being represented as they would like to be. All right, George, anything you'd like to say in closing here before I cut you loose? Yeah, everybody give me a break. Uh, (laughs) Vote for Steve Farron. Vote for uh, Jeff Stiff. Vote for Dave Compton. My wife will thank you if you don't vote for me. All right, see, now this is you know, what I like. That, 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 that is very tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. You know, my, my wife, <laughs> you know, wished I hadn't done this, but, you know, she has been kind enough to support me in doing it. I, I've got the opportunity to do it. I've been critical of the board in the past. I think it's only fair that I'm willing to go and serve and try and do what I think is right for the membership, try and represent them, and be willing to take the slings and arrows that that I've tossed at the board myself. He is George Mullins from Fort Worth, Texas, going to be running for KCBS Board of Directors. You can find that website again, changekcbs.com. George, appreciate the time tonight. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thank you, Greg. There he is. Georgie Moore going to be running for the board. Thanks to George for coming on and uh, very candidly talking about a lot of very, he's got some good, uh, he's got some good English skills on him there now, boy. So uh, know that uh, somebody can actually string together sentences is up for election this year. You should feel good about that, right? Absolutely. You should. All right. We've got Neil Strauder coming up in about three minutes. Yes, Fred. Ted will be on next week. Ted Reader will be on next week. For the last number of months, I have been talking to you, letting you know that you have a friend in an industry in which we all wish we had a friend in. How many people are taking advantage of the fact that we all know somebody in the fine jewelry business who's going to get you substantial savings? I'm talking about similar savings that Fred Gross is offering you for Mojo Bricks. Maybe there is a succulent Accutron watch that you have had your eyes on for the last one month or ten years. Couldn't bring yourself to bone out full retail price. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. But you're like, dude, I didn't know anybody. Bullshit. You know somebody now. He's Steve DeFranco. He's located right here in Cleveland, Ohio. I've done a large amount of business since I have run into him in person. Lo, these many year and a half ago. Great purchases. Here's the best thing. Steve is an independent operator of this jewelry business. He's got Accutron, Bolova, Citizens, Philip and Company watches, large selection of diamonds, jewelry, gold and silver, all this great stuff that people normally bone out ridiculous prices for. You're going to save when you go with Steve. So here's what you're going to need to do. You go to the Barbecue Central Radio Network homepage. You click on the Stephen DeFranco banner. You're going to land on the page that he has made specifically for Centralites, introducing himself, letting you know that he is a barbecue guy first, jeweler second. Actually, he might be a gun guy second, and then a jeweler third. Even. Peruse the inventory, then call that 440 number that you see listed. You're going to talk, ask for Steve specifically. Tell him you're a Centralite. Use the term barbecue brother and watch the savings unfold. You got still... Even though we're three weeks away, you can put stuff on layaway if you want a couple weeks to pay for it before you take delivery of it. You got the same as cash for six months financing available for Ohio residents only. And I know there's a lot of central lights in Ohio. 
Also, the $100 off on that $895 Blue Blood watch. With any watch that you get, because he is a watch junkie, free shipping, free gift wrapping, it's the holidays, free engraving if you want to, free batteries for life, free polishing, full service. you have any questions, Steve is more than happy to talk just jewelry shop with you. He's not going to sit there and pressure you into buying stuff. Mention my name, mention the term Barbecue Brother, get substantial savings. Go to stephendefranco.com or go to the Barbecue Central Radio Network's homepage. Click on the Stephen DeFranco banner and then look at the inventory and just call in and save. It's just that easy. Big Mista coming up next. Stick around. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs. And the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. on 22 till the hour. Here's going to be the Loof Lighter question. You name the movie that this song came off of. You might get yourself a free Loof Lighter. How about that? All right, let's go ahead and head on over to the hotline. West Coast time, baby. Big missed up in this bitch. Neil, what's up? Hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing absolutely fine. Have we found you in the back of a uh, trailer somewhere or what? <laughs> yeah, I'm out here in the Sherman Oaks with the farmer's market. <laughs> trying to sell a little barbecue. Getting a little chilly out here, though. Yeah, but making time <laughs> making time for uh, the Barbecue Central Radio Show, which we always appreciate and adore about Big Mista. All right, Neil, so I wanted to bring you on tonight. You are somebody that has had experience with Mojo Bricks. Last segment and the last hour, we had Fred Gross, the proprietor of this product. You got your hands yeah, on some. Sure. Did you get Did you get the hickory bricks specifically? I did get the hickory. All right, so let's talk about the hickory bricks. What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, I got they're, they're coming in in um, chunks now. They're smaller chunks as opposed to the one big brick. The they, they, where they come now is they're they're split, so they're in smaller chunks, so people can uh, you know use them in smaller uh, cookers. You know, like your Weber kettles, your your your, your Dover SMs and big green eggs, things like that. So um, I like the size of them because you can just throw a couple little pieces and not have to use a whole brick every time you cook. Now, Neil, what kind of a uh, cooker are you using? Uh, I have the big spice wine on the trailer. So, you know, I can use the whole bricks, but I also have a ranch kettle and uh, I have a, a UDS, uh, uh, XL UDS, the ugly drum smoker. All so, right, so, I mean, as somebody who has had also. experience with these, Neil, uh, what do you think the best way using them, incorporating them into your fire when you're using And We don't have to use the... Uh, spice wine in particular, just because a lot of people don't necessarily have that size of a cooker. But, you know, on the smaller ones, on the UDS, how do you find the best way to incorporate them? Uh, I use it along with charcoal. You, um, when, when, when it's available, I like using the, uh, the charcoal from Trader Joe's, which is you know, re- actually the rebranded uh, original rancher charcoal. I like it because it's an all-wood charcoal. Uh, there's no fillers or anything like that. And, you know, I'll start a charcoal fire, and I'll just drop a couple of the, the chunks on there. And they smoke a really long time. One, so, of, the, um, one of the things wait, that I'm getting in the chat ahead. room, uh, Neil, and you'll be able to, to speak on this, is the fact that uh, a lot of people are wondering, because of the density, because of the size, are they going to be smoldering versus producing, you know, a nice clean smoke? Um. It's clean. It's clean. And, you know, I, I, I cooked with some this morning. What I actually did, and I'm going to be putting a video up about it, is I took a, a chunk of, of regular hickory, and then I took a, a chunk, a same size chunk of uh, the mojo brick hickory, and put them on my fire at the same time, and I put them on a bed of coals to see how long they would burn. And um, the mojo brick burned about an hour longer. Uh, the smoke was clean. I mean, it wasn't like a big white smoke or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I had smoke going through the smoke the whole time. 
and um, the the actual piece of wood had disintegrated long, and the, you know the mojo brick was still intact and still smoking. Uh, how do you find the burn time with mojo bricks when you compare them to traditional like wood chunks or uh, sticks? Um, what I'm finding is the mojo bricks will burn somewhere to 30 to 50 percent longer. Wow. I mean, that's substantial, right? As a guy that is making a living off of barbecue aside from the competition scene, I mean, you're out there cooking open air markets, farmers markets. You, you need to get the most bang for your buck, right? That's right. And I, I don't have to go back and add it as often as I would have to with wood, you know, if I wanted, you know, to keep smoking, you know, for any length of time. I can, you know, put a few chunks in there, and I know I can get, you know, at least two or three hours of good smoke without, you know, if I'm not going to add any chunks. Now, if I'm cooking, like, in the spice wine, I actually have a charcoal basket, you know, that's made like a U, so I actually light one end of it, and it'll burn around. And I'll just, you know, use the chunks and intersperse them along the trail. And as it burns along, a new one will catch, so I can sleep. Yeah, that's uh, that is important. Have you ever used a whole brick? You, you know, let's say you have charcoal yes, running have. up to it, and then you have a brick, and then you have charcoal run on the backside. Yes, I have. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll actually put the once I'm doing the trail like that. What I can do is I can actually put bricks along the trail, and then pour the charcoal on top of it, and then as it burns along, you know, the bricks will catch as the charcoal is burning. And it'll, the charcoal will burn right around, and the brick will still be there burning. So, and you, you end up using less charcoal that way. One because it's taking up space in, in your in your trail, but two, it keeps burning. So you're still producing heat. You know when the charcoal's moved on. Now, when you're comparing as far as the flavor and the smoke that a mojo brick is putting off, when you're comparing them to the, the traditional options, you're finding that this is a more mild smoke, a more potent smoke. How is your palate and your customers finding Um, I think it's a little more potent. Uh, as my, my little four-year-old girl said, Mojo Bricks makes good smelling smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she likes it, and everybody else seems to like it, too. I've been using it. Customers are happy. Um, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, how were you first introduced to the product, Neil? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. How were you first introduced to the product? Um, people were talking about it on the Brethren, and, um, you know, I asked a few questions, and, and Fred happened to be on the site, and he, um, you know, sent me a private message asking if I wanted to try it out. And I said, sure, send me a couple of them, and I, you know, got them, and I was, uh, I threw them in the drum to see how they would burn, and I just kind of fell in love with them, you know, and the fact that they're uniform is another advantage to them. You know, as opposed to having a great big wood pile, you know, all these are the same size. You can stack them up, and they take up less space than, than a wood pile would. And plus they're burning 30 to 50% longer, so you're not consistently throwing wood on the fire like you would in some other instances. Uh, since you like them, uh, and since Fred is in Chicago, you're in SoCal, do you do you at all find yourself potentially uh, prohibiting uh, ordering like a pallet size or, or something in quantity to kind of save yourself from ordering consistently? Uh, but of course, you know anything off the internet is going to include shipping prices. That's something you have to factor in, or is it not that big of a concern for you? Yeah, you know, shipping is a bear no matter what you do. You know, um, to me, it's worth it. You know, uh, I don't. You know, I don't know for, I mean, for the average guy. He's not gonna. He's not gonna use as much as I am. So shipping's not gonna hurt him, you know, like it would for me. But um, to me, it's worth it because, you know, what I would pay in shipping, I'm saving, you know, in in, in the quantities that I'd have to buy. So, you know, because I'm not, y'all don't have to use as much of it. Neil Strauder joining us here on the show. Uh, Big Mista is his handle. You can of course find him on the internet. You can find him on Twitter. He's all over the place. He's a social media darling. And I think one of the things that people like about you, Neil, is the fact that here's a guy who got into this whole barbecue business, but you've made a success of yourself commercially. You know, you're doing this for a living now because your wife said you were allowed to because you make good barbecue. 
But you're doing it in a you're doing it like in this instance that not a lot of people have really gotten into or have been very successful at. And that's the whole farmer's market avenue. How did you get into that? And did you know off the bat that this was something a little bit out of the ordinary? It's not normal fare that you would see in a lot of other farmer's market type settings. And this was really going to take hold and, and kind of go the way it has. Um, no, we didn't know. I mean, at first I was, we were just doing some catering out of the house, you know, and, um, you know, my wife went to a farmer's market and said, hey, you know, maybe we ought to set up a little stand there. And it was a little farmer's market over in Watts. And they agreed to let us try it out because there are maybe two or three barbecue vendors in all the farmer's markets here around L.A. I, mean, I know all of them, you know, because there's just not many of them. Yeah. But they agreed to let us try it out. And, you know, we were just going out there on a Saturday and we kind of liked it. So, you know, me and my wife talked about it. And, you know, she said, you know, well, maybe, you know, if we do this for a year, we build it up. Um, you know, you can quit your job and you can do it full time. Well, I, we, we built it up and I ended up quitting my job in four months. Wow. So and, uh, quickly. she quit hers a year and a half later. <laughs> now you guys are the, uh, the king and queen of barbecue in Southern California. I mean, so like, here's the old adage, right, Neil? You're doing it, you're catering, you're making some side money. You're always thinking about maybe this is something I'm going to do full time. But when it comes right down to it, when you boil it down and you decide, okay, you know what? I'm actually going to make that leap and this is going to be my full time job. Is it like everybody else says you're doing it because you like it and it's fun otherwise, but as soon as it's your job, it's a job or is it still a love and a passion for you that has never died down regardless of the fact that you left another job to do this full time? Yeah, it, 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 it's the love. I really, I mean, I was in love with barbecue, you know, even before I started catering. I mean, I was out there, you know, competing and just practicing at the house and talking whenever I wasn't doing that. I was online talking about it. Uh, it's, it was the first time I found something in my life to do that I really love. You know, I, I've had all kinds of jobs. I've been a banker, I've been a bouncer, I've been a bodyguard, a DJ, a salesman, a web developer, you know. And it wasn't that I couldn't do those things and I wasn't successful at them. I just didn't care about them, you know. They didn't, they didn't motivate me enough to advance even more in them. But this, you know, this is something I really, really love doing. I have a passion for it. You know, I like cooking. I, I like being, you know, smelling like smoke and, and playing with fire and, you know, cooking meat. And most of all, seeing that look on people's face when they take a bite of my barbecue, you know, when their eyes light them because they've never had anything like it, you know. That, that is a hell of a reward. Yeah, I love it. And obviously it's uh, paying off very well for you. Uh, you're obviously doing very well in the markets, but you're getting TV exposure locally. You've been on nationally uh, syndicated television shows and, and all this great stuff, which has obviously helped increase the brand of Big Mr. Barbecue. And then you've, you've had the, mm-hmm. the Big Mr. Barbecue song, which I won't sing unless you encourage me, of course, Neil, and I will sing it. Uh I mean, what's next yeah, for? Oh, okay. What's next for Neil, though? I mean, what what would you like to see happen? What what's the the five year plan for you? Uh, well, right now, what we just did, we've just um, started bottling our rub. Um, you can find it on our Facebook page. Just go to Big Mister's Barbecue on Facebook. Now, on the left hand side, there's a little link that says Shop Big Mister's. Uh, we're just starting to sell our rub, and from there, we're going to release some other rubs, and we're going to start going into releasing our sauces. So. That's um, something that's going on. Then I'm in the process of writing a book. Um, just uh, it'll be a, a book about you know just throwing the best barbecue party you can. Um, just telling you how to be the king of your yard. <laughs> Neil, so, Neil, do we have know, it's a, not necessarily a competition thing? Do we have an announcement to make? Have you been signed to a book deal? Do you have breaking news for the Centralites? No, there's no book deal. I'm just writing because oh, I have stuff to say. Right. <laughs> hey, that's all right. You got oh, stories in you. Like. Got stories in you. You got to get that's them right. out. All right, Neil, before I let you go here, uh, who are you voting for for KCBS? Obviously, you know, the four horsemen are out there trying to, to get on the board, one or all. Do you have a like for any of those guys? Do you like somebody else? What do you think? Uh, first and foremost, I'm voting for George. George, uh, George I, I, first. I, I talked extensively about with George about uh, what he wants to do and his ideas, and and I agree with him. 
Now, George, George is my man, so uh, he'll definitely have my vote. What What about this other uh, uh, horseman ticket? Do you Do you like some of their other views, or you just like George the most? Uh, you know, George and I are also close friends. I also like Dave, Dave Carpenter. Dave Carpenter will be the other person because you know I talk, We've talked, you know, about judging and contests and stuff like that, and. You know, he's one of the people that judges need to be listening to. You know, he, he could, you know, be one of those people that go in and, and, and revolutionize the, the judging process because he really understands what's, what's going on. So he would be another person that I would vote for. All right, Neil Strauder is Big Mista. You can find him in SoCal vending in the uh, farmer's markets. Uh, you'll have to wait in line, though, because he's very popular. You can see him on television shows, and uh, you can get his rub hey, on the Facebook. Yes, go ahead. There's one thing I want to say. I want to thank everybody on Facebook and Twitter and on the Brethren for all their prayers and thoughts. Um, my little brother was caught in a house fire in San Francisco. Oh, jeez. And uh, he had got burned on 70% of his body. And I'm going to be going up next week to see him. You know, they're doing surgeries and things like that, you know, doing skin grafts, all that stuff. Yeah. But um, everybody, there's been such an outpouring of love. Um, I just want to take the time to thank everybody for thinking of us. Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully uh, things turn out the best in that regard, Neil. And uh, appreciate you coming on tonight and making time for us, and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right, man, we'll talk to you soon. All right, there he is. He's the big mister. Neil Strauder joining us there from uh, SoCal, where it's a salty 8 o'clock in the eve, I believe. So uh, outstanding. Thanks to Neil for uh, coming on and doing that. Gang, one last spot here before we get a winner for the Luft Lighter. And I got to talk about the longest running sponsor of the show. You know them as the Barbecue Guru. They make automatic pit temperature control devices, if you didn't know. They make the Onyx Oven. They make a host of products, quite frankly, that would make your barbecue and grilling life easier if you would just give them a try. Ask Neil for crying out loud. Here's a guy that is out there. Doing barbecue as a business, you don't think he could benefit from some type of automatic pit temperature control? I mean, sure, the Spice Wine Cooker is a phenomenal cooking vessel, one of seismic and gargantuan proportions as far as food that it can produce, temperatures that it can hold, the insulation, all of this good stuff. But how about something that might get you a little bit more sleep or allow you to prep some side dishes or whatever the case may be? Folks at the Barbecue Guru came up with this concept originally. Why would you want to go somewhere else and buy a also ran product when you can buy from the original creators, somebody that thought of this technology, was able to put pen to paper and then product to market? And they have four different options for you to choose from. They have a Procom 4 wireless unit. You're not tied down to anything. You can make pit adjustments as necessary from your hip. They have the ultra-popular CyberQ2 unit. They have the DigiQ DX. And, of course, the brand-new one, the Party Q. It's $129, $139 for those ceramic-style cookers. It's all-inclusive. It's one piece. Hooks right there. Very easy to set up. You have a digital LED display. You can uh, increase or decrease temperature in 5-degree increments. It runs on AA batteries. You get like 40 hours of burn time for each set of batteries that you use. So it's at least a couple hour or a couple overnight cooks at least. And it travels with you wherever you want to go. No complicated setup. No rehashing on new cookers or old cookers. Just bring it with you. Stick it on your old bullet style smoker or on your ceramic style cooker. And you are off and running. No wires, no plugins, no nothing. Party Q is the way to go. And starting at 129 bucks, it doesn't get better than that. You have to go check them out online for all the products, all of these pit temperature control devices. They're cookers. They have wicked good charcoal. They got the Blues Hog sauces, the Head Country sauces, various rubs to choose from as well. And, of course, that Onyx oven. Uh, Two ways to get in touch. Toll free, 800-288-GURU. That's G-U-R-U. Or online at thebbqguru.com. Call in now for the Loof Lighter, 877-448-0433. We will come back with a winner. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey.
All right, uh, quickly now. We're going to have to go get a winner. Got to make sure I'm using the right uh, mouse key here. Uh, we are area code 816, name and where you're calling from. This is Tyler from Blue Springs, Missouri, by Kansas City. Hey, Tyler, nearby Kansas City. How are you tonight, buddy? I'm doing great, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fantastic, Tyler. Thank you for asking. Uh, you interested in winning, potentially, a Luft lighter before we close out the show tonight? I would love the opportunity. All right, Tyler, just answer this very simple very simple question for your chance to win an $80 loof lighter for free and ship to your person for free. In the first hour, we were talking with Steve Farron about his run for the Kansas City Barbecue Society's Board of Directors. Here's the question. Name the current president of the KCBS. Uh, it's Candy. Is that correct? Candy. I got a real bad feedback. Is that all right? I need a last name, buddy. Oh, now we have to give it away still. Oh, this is really going to put me up towards the time. Sorry. Tyler, you were close. You were 50% correct. 50% correct. 877-448-0433. Area code 816 again, name and where you're calling from. It's me again. Tyler, how are you? Tyler. How are you? Don't listen to the, don't turn those uh, speakers off. Or am I, is that me feeding back? Uh, it may have been. Uh, you're not listening to the show and uh, talking to me at the same time, are you? Uh, well, not uh, anymore. Oh, well, I should <laughs> hang up on you just for that. All right, Tyler, you've called back. Uh, next question is this. We were talking with George Mullins just uh, two segments ago. He's also running for KCBS Board of Directors. Uh Name the city or state that George is from. The city or state? Yes. Damn, you got to be quicker than that now. Area code 562, name and where you're calling from. Uh -oh. Steve Rodriguez, California. Steve, how are you, buddy? <laughs> what the hell? Stop listening. Turn your speakers off if you're going to call. <laughs> it's going horribly. Area code 816, name and where you're calling from. It's Tyler. Are you kidding me? Tyler, how are you? Tyler, you're not listening. You're not listening to me in the background, are you? No, negative. Uh, all right. The last guy I just hung up on because he did the same thing that you did. All right. Here we go. Your uh, last shot to win a Luft lighter. The, uh, let's see. Now, see, you've taken all the questions that I had uh, very easily. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I was just talking with Neil Strauder. He is a farm, yeah. a, a farmer's market barbecue extraordinaire. What yeah. show was Neil on television? On the, uh, he was on the Sunfresh, uh, the, uh, oh, come on. Area code 562, name and where you're calling from. Hello? Hello. Steve Rodriguez. Steve, how are you, buddy? Hello, okay. Good. All right, I'm glad you turned me off in the background. That's how you get hung up on oh. the show. Uh, Steve, yeah, yeah, let me uh, let me ask you a question. So you could you want to win a lift sure. lighter, right? Yep. All right. Uh, I was just talking with Neil Big Mista Strotter, and he is a okay. farmer's market extraordinaire. What kind of a cooker does uh, he have, by the way? He's got a custom big ass uh, spice wine. 
That's right. Spice wine. It is. Steve is a winner tonight. Tyler tried 78 times, fell just short. Steve, you're going to win a uh, Luft lighter. It's free. $80 value. going to be right. shipping to you. So here's what you need to do. You need to send me your shipping information. Greg at the BBQ Central And uh, we will have it forwarded right to you. You'll probably have it in less than a week for you to use. I'll look forward to your feedback on that. All right. Thanks a lot, Greg. Yeah, you got it. Thanks for calling in tonight. That's Steve is winning. Absolutely fantastic. Sorry, Tyler. Man, that was some rough going, buddy. I feel bad, like I should give you a consolation prize. Uh, the bottom line is I have no consolation prize. That is bad, I think. Oh, well. Try better. We'll have more prizes, Tyler. Don't worry about it. And uh, you can call back in. I'm not saying that you can't call back in. Do I have to go over calling etiquette again at the top of next show? Remember, if you want to get hung up on Listen to the show and then call in so I can hear the echo monster in the background. I'll hang up on your ass. You can believe that. I'll hang up on you. All right, let's review. Steve Farron joined me in the first hour running for KCBS BOD. Check him out. Ismellsmoke.com. Also, changekcbs.com. Fred Gross joined us talking about the 40% off Mojo Bricks when you use the coupon Big Hot Hardwood. Big Hot Hardwood. You spend $10, you also get a free six-pack of whatever wood Fred has laying around, the Mojo six-pack. So thanks to Fred. 40% off Big Hot Hardwood. George Mullins joined us at the top of this hour talking about his run for KCBS BOD. Change KCBS.com for him as well. Also, closing out the show, Big Mista. Talking about Mojo Bricks, talking about how he got started in the farmer's market biz. He's got some rubs now available on his Facebook page. Prayers to uh, Neil's brother as well in that fire. Gang, want to help you, uh, remind you to control the rusty grill grate population as those cast iron grates are cooling down. Hit them with some Pam, a little Crisco. Let them bake in as it cools down for rust-free performance for their life. And of course, most importantly, September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. Show's jam-packed next week already. I have no more bookings left. I will see you next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then, this is your program host, proud U.S. American Greg Rempe. Good night now. Hello, everybody. This is Gary Bay Nerd Chuck, host of Wine Library TV, a.k.a. W.